So here are the basic commands, snort, and then some options, and then some filter options. Now those filter options are the Berkeley packet filter options, the BPF rules, which are very similar to TCP dump, like host 10.10.10.1. That will filter only that host. Or you could say net 192.168.whatever. Or you could say port equals, source port equals, or destination port equals, and it would filter by just that traffic. Uh, here are some of the options. Uh, a dash A equals full, uh, set alert mode to full or, or verbose. The D is the dump application layer. That's sort of what displays the uh, beyond the header information. The big X there, the capital X, shows the raw hex to the screen. The V shows uh, is means be verbose, and that actually displays more output to the screen. And then I will determine which interface it will run on. Snort has, uh, and any good IDS should have, a check for valid packets. In other words, that they're not malformed in some way. Snort does what's called a sanity check on packets to ensure they meet the basic TCP IP standards. If they don't, of course, it'll immediately determine that this is a bad packet and is suspicious in some way. All TCP packets must be at least 20 bytes. That's a, an example. Uh, TCP offset field or the TCP header measures the beginning of the data field and on and on it goes. These are all standard rules of TCP IP that any packet should apply to. And if one doesn't, then we know automatically there's something either very wrong or this is part of an attack. How the preprocessors work. Once we get a good packet, there are some basic checks we can make for things. Um, some, some very basic things. Scans can be uh, often detected fairly quickly. You can certainly tell when someone's sending out a lot of SINs and there are no uh, acts being sent back to the uh, response. Um, uh, if you saw both SIN and FIN flags on together, you could immediately tell that that's obviously a port scan. There's no reason for that to ever exist. That's certainly a, a, a violation of CCP rules. And uh, Snort uses the uh, preprocessors to make these checks quickly so as not to slow down the entire IDS. Uh, this is something that we do before we actually apply the packet to a rule set, which will filter out a lot of the initial bad packets already. This will catch a lot of the scans before we actually have to apply it to some signatures. Okay, construct of a signature. What do signatures look like? Snort refers to signatures. That's the patterns that we're looking for on the network as rules. Uh, snort rules are stored in rules files that are loaded in the bottom of the snort.conf file. That's the big mother configuration file, snort.conf. Uh, and they look something like the following. Include rule path, uh, bad traffic dot rules, include rule path, uh, exploit dot rules. That rule path, of course, is a variable that points to the uh, uh, rules folder. And those, those are different type of rules there. Snort rules have the following format. This is the format that the actual rule code itself is in. First is a header. Uh, it says it looks something like alert TCP external um, dash net any to home da uh, dash net. In other words, any TCP traffic from the external net, which is a variable that just basically means that the, any nets not uh, the, uh, including the net that this particular snort box is on, to the home net. And that's another keyword slash variable that describes the network that the IDS is on. So any packet from outside on any port uh, to inside on port zero, that's the, that's the first part of the, the, um, first part of the uh, uh, rule. That's the, what we call the header. The next part is the options, message bad traffic TCP port zero. That's what we will report in our alert. Uh, the next uh, line there uh, says class type, uh, miscellaneous activity, and some IDs, and some revisions. Now, there's the fully constructed rule at the end there, basically saying anything from the external net to the inside net on port zero, which is a, a very unconventional port, please create an alert that says bad traffic TCP port zero traffic and send it somewhere. After a signature is matched uh, to a, uh, after a packet is matched to a signature, Snort moves the packet to the output engine. That's the entire content of the packet. Now, what we do with it then uh, is completely up to the output engine. And there are many built in, and there are many third party, third party products that have built their own Snort plugins 
to uh, provide for output functionality. For instance, you could easily send that packet, either just the header of a few couple bytes, or just the timestamp, for example, to maybe an SMP SMTP trap, or enter it into the logs, or write it to an SQL database. That's a popular one because it has high performance and high throughput. You could email or pager, and on and on it goes. You could set off a sound alarm, send a TCP reset to kill the uh, offending packet uh, stream, and on and on it goes. There's an infinite uh, a number of choices you have with the output of the uh, data. That could, that could include the entire offending packet, it could include just the header, it could include just a message saying, hey, I detected this. How the output plugins work? Okay, well, um, by default, Snort creates a flat file, uh, a flat log file uh, as follows. Uh, in other words, if you look in the um, uh, uh, the, fo uh, the uh, folder that, that um, uh, sn Snort is operating in, there is a log file, and in there, there will be a uh, list of, um, uh, act of uh, alerts. Um, these won't include unless you specify to the uh, binary data of the actual packet, but it will include header information and what alert was tripped. Of course, here are some of the other uh, output plugins that we're talking about here. We have Alert Syslog. That's a plugin that, uh, of course, alerts uh, that, that logs to a syslog database. There's Log TCP Dump. Now, that will write the packets in binary format in the TCP Dump format. That can be read by Ethereal and pretty much any other sniffer or protocol analyzer on the planet. There's Database, which will send it out perhaps to an SQL, MySQL, or SQL database. And then there's Unified, which is a, sh a short, unified binary format alerting and logging logging, and it's, uh, it's, it's actually a very fast and preferred format. Central database and console is one of the, the, the more uh, used features of Snort. It can be done completely from the command line, but there are many tools out there that will allow it to be much more user-friendly. Most enterprise implementations use a back-end actual database to store the alerts and then uh, report uh, current activity to our, an analyst's console. Now, ACID, A-C-I-D, is the most widely used free console slash GUI front end uh, to snort. Now, it will configure to use MySQL database by default, uh, and it can turn snort into a pseudo enterprise class product. Another newer product is Squeal, or Squeal. Squill. It's uh, pronounced Squeal. It's spelled S-G-U-I-L. And it's a new and very powerful alternative. There, there, there have been uh, some uh, papers written on it. It's, it's uh, a, a newer preferred uh, GUI front end. The, uh, here's a problem. At around 600,000 alerts, the database bogs down to, uh, to five minute or longer queries. And that's useless. So it's, it's worth noting that um, once you start packing a database with too many uh, records, it, it is very difficult to actually get any information from it at that point. It's just too big to cope with. Um, it requires constant planning and tuning to keep, of the sensors to keep it, to keep it um, up to spec and keep the false positives down. And attackers may use tools like SNOT, which we'll talk about in a second, to quickly fill the database in seconds. That's one tactic for uh, overcoming a uh, IDS system is to just completely fill its logs so that it's so, uh, it's like finding a needle in a haystack, your attack. 